Good morning. Today we're going to take the limit as x approaches zero from both sides of x times the sine of one over x. Now, we need to look at the form to decide what to do. And as um, x goes to zero, x goes to zero. And as the sine of x, what well, sine of one over x goes to zero, well, as uh, one over x goes to zero, uh, the, the quantity goes to infinity. And as the sine goes to positive infinity, um, it oscillates back and forth. So in all honesty, we just say that the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of one over x does not exist. D and E. Uh, you can use other notation that's uh, pretty much, I've seen a lot of people use it, I like it. Um, and it kind of demonstrates. And zero times does not exist is not zero. Uh, zero times does not exist is we don't know. Um, when you have this, and, it's, and the does not exist comes from the the uh, oscillic nature of the sine function as it moves to positive or negative infinity, it just keeps bouncing back and forth between uh, positive and negative one. I, it's just a little representation here of the sine graph. Oh, that's not a very good one, but anyway, you get the you get the idea. As it goes to infinity, it just keeps bouncing back and forth between positive and negative one. So we have to employ something called the squeeze theorem. And the squeeze theorem states that if we have a function that is greater than uh, a function and a function that is smaller than a function, and graphically we see that like that, and the function that's, this is not the, uh, This is not the function, of course, the functions we're dealing with here, but if we have a function that's greater, and we'll just call that point C, that point uh, F of C. If we have a function that's greater and a, and a function that's, that's less than a certain function, and uh, the function that's greater and the function that's less than the function of interest goes to one number, then that function of interest also goes to that same value. So in, in essentially, essentially we're squeezing, that's why it's called the squeeze theorem, we're squeezing this limit in order to see what happens. So the way you do this is you set up an inequality and uh, kind of based on this, on the sine graph, we know that sine of one over x is greater than or equal to negative one and less than or equal to one on its entire domain. And that is a true statement. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a true statement. As one over X goes to zero, the, the, the number shoots to infinity. And as the sign uh, goes to infinity, it is uh, encased by, between negative one and one. It's bound by, by the values negative one and one. Uh, so in order to use the squeeze theorem, once we have this inequality and it's true, then notice that if we multiply through by an x, so we'll multiply through by negative x, or by x, we get a negative x, x times the sine of 1 over x. This is the function we want right here. It's the one we're looking at. And then when we multiply 1 by x, we just multiply the inequality through by x. Now we have what we're looking for. Now we, since the sine of x, sine of one over x is between negative one and one, then multiplying through everything by an x will not change this inequality. It will, it still stays true. So now we can take the limit as negative x goes to zero. And the limit as negative x goes to zero, negative x goes to zero. And the limit as x goes to zero is also zero. So therefore, we can say that the limit 
as x goes to 0, x times the sine of 1 over x goes to 0 as well.